Hey, welcome back, everyone. It's my privilege to have in studio the president of Poland, Andre Duda, president of the Republic of Poland, really since 2014. And he's done a, a remarkable job and stepped up big time when this Ukraine war started. His country has taken in about a million Ukrainians. Mr. President, welcome to the show. Bardzo serdecznie witam pana redaktora i witam także wszystkich naszych słuchaczy i widzów. I greet you and all our listeners and viewers. How has Poland been able to absorb the million Ukrainians and what has been the greatest challenge for your country as after Russia's invasion? That was a reflex of our hearts. Uh, nobody really had to encourage Poles, my compatriots, uh, to welcome refugees from Ukraine into their homes. We call them guests in Poland. When uh, Russia attacked Ukraine, uh, launching a full-scale attack, as we put it, on the 24th of February 2022, well, indeed, a huge flood of refugees uh, started to move towards the Polish border. We opened up our border immediately, trying to let as many people get through as possible, try to make it available for uh, the biggest possible number of people to flee from the areas which Russia was attacking, because right from the start in that war, Russia has been brutally attacking civilian neighborhoods. It's not only military targets. Right from the start, they carried out brutal missile uh, raids of big neighborhoods in big Ukrainian cities in Kharkiv, in Kiev, and in other places. Also close to the Polish border in Lviv, in Lutsk. So there were a lot of such attacks, and people were fleeing just like that. Indeed, they were welcomed in Polish homes. And uh, just anonymous uh, people whom they had never known took them. Uh, uh, Poles went to the border, took those people home, they invited them and supported them. That was just a reflex of the heart, so to say. We know simply what it means that somebody is suffering when somebody was attacked, especially by Russians. Unfortunately, this is a part of our history, a big part of our history. And this um, opening of the hearts was just immediate. It was just a reflex of the heart. It, it was pretty amazing to see. You were also the first nation to give the Ukrainians fighter jets. Uh, and they need more fighter jets, don't they? Yes, uh, we have uh, transferred to Ukraine a uh, big um, size, big parts of armaments as the first ones. The biggest uh, assistance, of course, is coming from the United States and being neighbors uh, to Ukraine. We are very much grateful for that to the U.S. authorities for that help, for that support to Ukraine. Without this support, Ukraine would not survive, and there is no doubt about that. They wouldn't be able to defend themselves. It is not only about uh, the bravery of Ukrainian soldiers, which is wonderful, but it is also a matter of having things to fight with, the equipment to fight with. So right from the start, we were also sending uh, armaments to Ukraine, the one which uh, Ukrainian soldiers were able to use right away. That was important at the, uh, at the outset. They had no experience whatsoever with uh, Western American military equipment or German equipment or French equipment. But uh, they were very good at uh, using uh, Soviet-era Russian equipment. That is why we sent right away MiG-29 jets. Uh, we put them at the disposal of Ukraine. Ukrainian um, uh, soldiers, and they had pilots who were able to fly those planes right away. We sent more than 300 tanks to Ukraine. Mainly, these were uh, the post-Soviet era tanks, but we modernized them in Poland, and uh, they had uh, strengthened armors. Uh, also, communication systems were high-quality ones. Uh, they were well-equipped and uh, ready to fight. We sent more than 300 such tanks, plus also Leopard tanks later on, uh, produced by Germany. We even organized wow. a, a tank coalition or an armor coalition, as we called it. We also uh, talked to everybody and convinced everyone upon the request of Ukraine to send modern tanks to Ukraine, the tanks which uh, were uh, tanks of the 21st century. And indeed, we were implementing that help all the time. So we belong, we're among the three states who actually gave the biggest military assistance to Ukraine. That is, and that was a huge effort to us, but we are doing that also in order to strengthen and Polish security, because we know that Russian imperialism has to be stopped. To us, this is of key importance to make sure that Ukraine can defend itself so that Russians are not able to conquer Ukraine, so that they do not defeat Ukraine. Ukraine has to defend itself, and I make an appeal to everyone to support Ukraine, because the primacy of international law has to be reinstated, and in order for that to happen, Russian troops have to be driven out from the Ukrainian lands. Ukraine has to recover control of its internationally recognized borders. So we've given $70 billion, but everything we give seems late. 
High Mars, late. Patriot, late. F-15 trainings, late. Uh, the cluster bombs, late. The Javelin missiles, late. The tanks, 31, not one has arrived. How hard has it been on the Ukrainians because it seems like we are always late? First and foremost, uh, assistance is needed, and it's positive that the assistance is being given. I'm always saying, well, we need to appreciate that, because without the military support, especially with modern equipment, Ukraine would not be able to defend itself. The problem that Ukrainians are facing is not only the so-called military techniques or technology, simply said weapons. There is also another thing. Russia simply is... Russians are much more numerous than Ukrainians. Vladimir Putin uh, does not care for the life of his soldiers. He sends thousands of soldiers to die, as a matter of fact, in many cases. Russians are suffering huge losses, but he's sending uh, soldiers coming from the far east of Russia. Uh, these are not soldiers uh, from Moscow. Uh, they are not reservists uh, or conscripts from St. Petersburg, from big cities, where there are influential elites, where there could be a rebellion on the part of the society, where the world would be able to see uh, mothers of fallen soldiers protesting. He is uh, taking soldiers from uh, far away areas of Russia, non-Russians. They are coming from many different nations, nations uh, who live in Russia, and those soldiers uh, are being killed en masse simply. But they are actually outnumbering Ukrainians with a sheer number. This is the difference between 40 million right. Ukrainians and but, but 140 are, million Russians. To, we are late on this. And it may it makes it harder in America for us to support the war when we're late on getting the stuff they need, yet the numbers are high in terms of what we already given. Have you expressed that to President Biden that you know they need F fifteens, they need more tanks, thirty one is not enough? Yesterday I said to President Biden because we had an opportunity to see each other during a reception um, given here at New York by uh, Mr. President on the occasion of the UN General Assembly, uh, traditionally. I said I, I ask very much to provide further support to Ukraine to supply armaments to Ukraine because that is of key importance to stop Russian imperialism, to avoid a huge war because I am convinced that if Russian imperialism is not stopped, then Russia, sooner or later, with its actions, will lead to a great war. And then, unfortunately, as we have seen in history, from the history of the First World War and the Second World War, in order to bring about peace in Europe somehow, the United States, again, will have to get involved by deploying its soldiers. That is why I urge and I make an appeal to help Ukraine right now, so that Ukraine is able to defend itself before this conflict spills over. Today, we can cut off Russian imperialism simply by forcing Russians to withdraw, and by doing that, by punishing the imperialist ambitions which Vladimir Putin is demonstrating. This is a huge opportunity today to keep the peace in the world, and I appeal to everyone. I also asked President Biden to do the same, to use this opportunity. This opportunity is being used precisely through supporting Ukraine. We are starting sending armaments to Ukraine. We are helping Ukrainians to defend their homeland. So you, I understand, are spending even more on your defense than any other nation in NATO per, per capita for your GDP. Not only are you doing 2%, you're going to get up to 4%. Why do the Polish people and you, President Duda in particular, understand the need to hit the threshold of 2 and double it where other nations like Germany, France, Hungary, and others don't even get close to that? In fact, only nine nations are hitting their 2%. That drives, that drives critics of NATO crazy, like people like President Trump. And he's got a great point, doesn't he? I was 17 years old in 1989 when the Iron Curtain was falling and when Poland was liberating itself from the darkness of communism. And simply from the Russian, from the Soviet sphere of influence, we were successful thanks to solidarity, thanks to the determination of the Polish people, but also thanks to huge support from the United States. And we will always be grateful uh, to President Ronald Reagan. We will recall him with uh, great, uh, with 
gratefulness, but also our Pope, John Paul II, in my cabinet in Warsaw. I've got a picture uh, where uh, Ronald Reagan and the Pope were talking to each other. They were two huge leaders, world leaders, and together with Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, they brought uh, the fall of the Iron Curtain. And thanks to that, we managed to liberate ourselves without a fight, without bloodshed in a democratic way, through protests, through elections. That was a great, great success. But we understand full well in Poland what Russian occupation is, what Russian sphere of influence stands for. And today, when Russia again has revived its imperial ambitions, when it wants to govern, to subjugate itself other nations, which it demonstrated in Georgia back in 2008, which it has been demonstrating since 2014 in Ukraine, and since last year, through full-scale aggression, by crushing civilian neighborhoods, by killing people, Polish people understand full well that we have to prepare ourselves right. to show that we are strong enough, and hence the decisions uh, to spend on defense, on strengthening Polish armed forces. Of course, we are very happy to have on our soil the U.S. soldiers, and we are really grateful for that to the United States as a state and as a member of NATO. But we know that what is of biggest importance is to make sure that we are a responsible ally, and a responsible ally is the one who cares for their own security. Uh, President Duda of Poland, I have so many questions for you, but I guess first and foremost, is this a Putin issue? Is Vladimir Putin the one who really wants to expand and get the Russian Empire back? Or is this a Russian government policy and he just happens to be the president? Is Putin the problem or is Russia the problem? Of course, a huge problem is the attitude of the presidents of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin. He is leading the state, after all, and these are his political decisions. And of course, uh, of course, a circle of his collaborators as well. Uh, let us be open and frank and say the following. This policy, the imperialist policy of Russia, the policy of aggression of Russia against Ukraine, uh, meets support of a huge part of the Russian society. There are no no big protests in Russia against uh, Vladimir Putin's policy. Russians, uh, for many years, have been fed with propaganda. They are being convinced that they have the right to govern other nations, that they have the right to expand their Ruski Mir. But the nations in our part of the world, in our part of Europe, uh, had to do with a Russian aggression, with Russian influences, and they don't want to have them back. And we will defend ourselves against that because we do not want to have Ruski Mir. We have our own culture, we have our own customs, and we want to preserve these. We do not want Russia to impose its rules upon us. Like they've done before, with the Soviet Union coming on one end, Nazi Germany on the other end, and they cut Poland to pieces, and you're not going to let that happen again. I'm sure of it. Uh, a huge number of our citizens were murdered. Uh, Poles were shot down during the Second World War. That was done by Germans, by German Nazis. That was also done by Russians in cutting. They killed Polish officers, Polish intelligentsia. Several thousand Poles were murdered in a brutal way right. by the Stalin regime, by the Soviets. Hundreds of thousands were deported to faraway Siberia. We know what suffering means in right. Russian enslavement, and we never want to see that yeah. again. They're great at this capturing things, like they're taking Ukrainian kids and bringing them into Russia. Uh, they give 4% of their GDP to NATO, and they've already given uh, 3.15, um, excuse me, $3.26 billion towards this uh, fight in Ukraine and have taken in over a million Ukrainians. The president of Poland, who understands the threat, in studio. More with him in just a moment. Mr. President, President Duda, uh, we're privileged to have the president of Poland, who's done such a remarkable job as an ally to the Americans, especially to the Ukrainians, and understand the Russian threat. Uh, Mr. President, give me your view on the counterinsurgency Right now, uh, I know you said uh, prior to this, the Russians have really dug in and they're looking to protect the land they stole. Uh, and but it seems as though there seems to be breakthroughs over the last few weeks in taking back small towns. Are they getting the demining equipment? Are they starting to see some penetration? 
Początek ofensywy, the beginning of the offensive czy or the counteroffensive launched by Ukraine was very difficult. The reason for that was that, well, perhaps the Ukrainians might not have or might have underestimated the Russians, their preparation to keep the occupied areas. Russians built a very strong line of defense. They built fortifications and first and foremost, they laid hundreds of square kilometers of minefields. And in Indeed, the Ukrainian army, which was launching the counteroffensive, was entering those minefields and suffered huge losses. That is why a couple of months ago, I personally was asked by President Volodymyr Zelensky uh, that Poland sends special vehicles, uh, demining vehicles. And as a matter of fact, we were supplying such vehicles from Poland as part of our support. We were looking uh, for them all over Poland in military units in order to be able to deploy them to Ukraine as soon as possible so that they could support the defensive activities of Ukrainians to support the counteroffensive. But in fact, Russians did a lot of work to fortify, and that was holding back to a large extent the Ukrainian uh, counteroffensive. Today, um, some of those uh, right. minefields have been neutralized, but that is going to be a concern for tens of years after the war ends because we know that minefields are a huge tragedy. Um, anti-personal mines. Uh, but today, today, a lot of those difficulties have been overcome. 90 seconds left. Um, right now, people wonder how committed Western Europe is to this. There's word that India is selling Russian oil back to Western Europe. They get it at a discount. They're starting to break their own sanctions. Countries like Germany. Do you worry about countries like Germany and France who are not giving what they pledged? Uh, you think they'll start to maybe forget about this? Well, in the first place, um, I keep calling on helping Ukraine. The assistance to Ukraine means also very consistent implementation of the sanctions policy vis-a-vis -vis Russia. Russia has to be stopped. The Russian imperialism is very dangerous. Today, this Russian imperialism is demonstrated through the brutal aggression against Ukraine. But if Russia is successful in Ukraine, then it will probably attack uh, other states. As many years ago, in 2008, when when Russia uh, invaded Georgia, Polish President Lech Kaczynski was saying in Tbilisi, and I had an honor to cooperate uh, with him back then as a young minister in his office. He said that today it's Georgia, tomorrow perhaps it will be Ukraine, and then perhaps uh, uh, the Baltic states that. and perhaps even my country, Poland. He, he said that. He said it in 2008, and unfortunately his words are coming true. That is why we are trying so much to support Ukraine today in our part of Europe, right. the presidents of the Baltic states, myself, because we are aware uh, that uh, Russia poses a real yeah. threat, that there is a Russian imperialism. Mr. President, it was a thrill to have you here, and I uh, was so glad you're an ally of ours the way you fought with us in Afghanistan, Iraq, and doing it again. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.